Hey guys, in this new video, we're going to take a look at how exactly do we name different functional groups. So here the naming system that we use is called nomenclature. And here we can have naming systems for other types of functional groups. We already learned how to name alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. But there are other groups that exist out there. Now, we're going to say it's similar to the previous naming experiences that we've done. We're going to find the longest carbon chain and change the ANE ending based on the functional group present. Here again, if you have a tie in the longest chain, choose the way that gives you more substituents. Then we're going to say here, number the chain from the end closest to the functional group present and provide a name for its location. Now, some functional groups um, don't need their location numbered because they are terminal, meaning they're found at the end. These functional groups would be carboxylic acids. They don't have to be numbered. Esters aldehydes, their locations don't have to be stated because they're always found at the end. Here, same thing with substituents. If you have similar substituents, then use numerical prefixes. So di, tri, tetra, and penta. Now, when it comes to functional groups, we're going to say if they're present, they change the ending, the suffix, to these new names here. So basically, we would change the E ending of the alkane name to oic acid, change the E ending to O8, change the E ending of the alkane to al. So basically in all these, we're modifying the E ending to one of these new endings. And we'll see how that works. And then here, we would modify ane to ene, like we saw earlier. We'd modify ane to yene, and then ane is just ane. Ethers, we'd end the name with ethers, and alkyl halides, they don't form the end of the name. So, a carboxylic acid, remember, a carboxylic acid can be seen as C double bond O, OH. You might even see it as COOH, or you might see it as CO2H. These are the different ways we can see in a carboxylic acid. An ester, an ester is a C double bond O connected to an O connected to a C. You could have it written as COOC or CO2C. An aldehyde. An aldehyde is a C double bond O connected to an H. And it can also be written as this, CHO, C-H-O. That's the shorthand way of writing an aldehyde. A ketone is C double bond O connected to a C on both sides. Now, notice that these first four all have this group in common a C double bond O. That C double bond O has a name. That C double bond O is referred to as a carbonyl. It is not a functional group. It just belongs in a lot of different functional groups. Here, alcohol is when you have a C connected to OH, and that's just an SP3 carbon connected to OH. That's not to be confused with this carbon here that's also connected to an OH, but is also double bonded to an O. An amine is when you have a carbon single bonded to a nitrogen. We've already seen alkenes, C double bond C, alkynes, C triple bond C, alkanes, C single bond C. Ethers are COC, not to be confused with an ester, which is also COC, but this C has a double bond O as well. And then an alkyl halide is just a carbon connected to a halogen. That halogen is usually represented by the variable X. So X represents fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Groups in group 7A, the halogens. So these are our major functional groups that you're expected to know at this point. Again, when you get to organic, you learn a few more functional groups that will be added to this list. Here, this is just a list of priority. You'll learn more about priority when you get to organic 1. Don't worry about that too much. Just realize here, those functional groups are present. They change the ending of the name. 